Yep. <laughs> we're swerving. We're swerving away from triumphs and we're going into NGs now. <laughs> so yeah, guys, welcome to the next episode of the Rusty Beauty's Garage. And today we're going to be working on an MG, surprisingly. So this MG belongs to a friend and he asked me if I can help him with his clutch because uh, he has issues, obviously, with the clutch. And I told him that I'm not an MG guy, I'm a Triumph guy. Nothing wrong with MGs, the thing is I'm not familiar with them and it's going to take me a while to figure it out. So uh, I'm like literally looking at it and I'm figuring out as I'm going what is what and what goes where and everything. But anyways, the story is that he got his clutch repaired or replaced twice in the last, I don't know, Two years two times a uh, shop repaired the clutch or replaced the clutch for him and now it has a problem again this time he decided not to call that shop again he decided to bring it to me so here we are taking apart a midget so luckily i have a friend he's one of uh, my followers actually who visited me a few times and we became friends so he's just finishing restoring a midget and um, I had a chat with him and he even sent me some videos of his car telling me what and where to undo so I can take the engine out because apparently these you can either take only the engine out and deal with the clutch or you can take the engine and the transmission as a unit but you can't take only the transmission out just like on the tri like on the triumphs so I think I'm gonna attempt to take the engine only out without the transmission, but we will see. Anyways, I already started uh, removing the bonnet and then I realized, well, wait, I, I didn't film uh, intro. So here we are filming the intro. So I tested the clutch actually, and it doesn't feel like the clutch is worn. It feels like it is not disengaging properly. Sometimes when you press it, when you press the pedal, the gears click in, no problem. Sometimes when you press it, it makes noise, like a release bearing noise, but worse. And when it makes that noise, you can't go into gear. Maybe tomorrow, because it is evening actually, so the only job that I want to do today is remove the bonnet. And tomorrow, with the bonnet off, I'm going to do another test so you can see what's going on, how the clutch acts. So that's it for now. I'm just gonna hook it up with uh, my crane, engine crane, and I'm gonna undo the whole bonnet, and that's gonna be it for tonight. I'm gonna do that on my own, and I'll see you tomorrow. All right, I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear all kinds of crunchy noises on the, from the clutch. So now we are in what? Neutral? No, now we are in reverse. So she goes. But look at that. Let's see. Now it went in first. Let, now I let go of the clutch. When I press the clutch, I can hear the sound. And it went in, but it gr in, it's grinding a little bit, or a lot of bit. Okay, now I can put it, let me try. No. Okay. I don't know, it sounds like sometimes it goes in, no problem. Let me see. Let's go in reverse. Okay. So it went. Okay, well, looks like the engine is coming out anyways, so we can reach the clutch. But I can hear this crunchy sound. That doesn't sound really good. Alright, so here we are. Starting to take apart things so we can take the engine out. And the first obstacle that I see here is I don't see a good way to drain the coolant and we have to drain it so we can take the rod out. And the only way that I could think of was through the filler. 
So I opened it and I think I'm gonna shove this uh, pipe in. It goes pretty deep. So now with my vacuum pump, I can pump it out as much as I can, at least the most of it. And then we'll see for the rest. We're gonna make a mess for sure. So anyways, <laughs> did I mention I was gonna make a mess? <laughs> yep. I wanted to empty my vacuum pump because it was pretty full with uh, all kinds of other fluids that I sucked from somewhere else. And look at that. I spilled it right here. Fantastic. So anyways, I covered it with kitty litter. We're going to take care of that later. Let's do what we wanted to do, right? All right, we made a little mess, but we were able to uh, recover most of it. When the radiator was empty, I removed this hose and I shoved the pipe into this one, sucked as much as we could. So now probably we still have some inside the heater core. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp this hose if I can, and then I'm gonna undo it I'm gonna raise it up and then we're gonna suck from whatever is in the core if we can. All right, so um, the radiator, I unhooked it from here, these two bolts that were holding it to the shroud, but it looks like there's two more bolts holding it to the bottom of the shroud underneath and I can't reach those. It is like crazy. But I believe that that's how they were taking it out before because it looks like this shroud has been bent up in order to take the radiator out. This means that somebody shoved their fingers under there, like right there. I can feel the bolt, but that's impossible i can't do that looks like the whole shroud must come out and the shroud is held with a bolt here and uh, the one on this side and that's it oh i can see maybe down there there's another one yeah there's another one there but i have no access to these bolts oh my god <laughs> how do i access them i can't like here Inside, I can see. Do you see in that hole? I can't. But here on this side, you can see the boat. <sighs> That's crazy. I can see it through here as well. Where is it? Let me put my finger inside. Yeah. I can see this one through here. <laughs> the other one is impossible. Oh my God, who made those cars? <laughs> Anyways. Okay, I was able to undo this somehow through these holes here and here. How am I gonna put them back together? I have no idea, but we're gonna think about it later. But now the whole thing is loose, so it should come out. The bottom bolt down there wasn't used. See? Yes, okay. So these are the bolts that I was talking about. <laughs> Continuing with the messes, it leaked even more. Oh my God, that's crazy. Anyway, <laughs> let's see now. Oh my God. Okay, we're gonna remove the alternator and everything that's here in the front. We're gonna remove this pipe somehow, but still, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to move the engine forward in order to split it from the transmission. I'm probably gonna have to raise it up and then pull it. Such a mess. Anyways, let me try to strip here as much as I can. Okay, so I removed the fan blade and 
I noticed two things here. First of all, look at the belt, how loose this is. It is very, very loose. So we're gonna have to tighten it more when we put it. We have the adjustment on the bracket. The other thing though is, you notice the pulley of the alternator? It is not on the same plane with this pulley. Looks like the rear end of the alternator is a little bit too far out and maybe this bracket is bent yeah you can see how it is bent out a little bit so when we're putting it back we have to probably try to bend it a little bit back on the press we will see just have to keep that in mind this is scaring me to dead because this is the sender for the temperature i guess and I think it was bypassed because look at that. Probably it's not working anymore because normally this is where you see your temperature, but look at this. There's an additional gauge there showing your temperature. So I don't know where it's taking its signal from, but it's electric. I don't see anything here to the engine connected so anyways we have to be careful with this because I believe it's full it's filled with ether I'm not really sure but we have to be careful with that line so let me disconnect it first and then we're gonna remove the alternator all right so I think everything that needs to be removed from above is removed now except the engine mounts, of course, and the starter motor. So I unplugged it, I disconnected the wire, but I want to undo the bottom bolt first before I remove the top one. So we're gonna wait with that, but everything on this side is also disconnected. This is the line for the oil pressure. It was connected over there. Uh, the temperature is disconnected now. It's sitting on top of the battery. The battery is disconnected, don't worry. Um, yeah, the alternator is out. On this side, I unhooked the exhaust pipe and the uh, fuel line, the throttle and the choke cables are disconnected. And I don't think there's anything else that's hooked up to the engine here. So now we have to undo all the bolts on the transmission and the starter motor the motor mounts and eventually we're gonna try to pull the engine out before that though we're gonna have to i'm gonna clean up a little bit around all this mess because i need to jack the car up of course so i can roll underneath and uh, we made a big mess so let me clean up quickly and i'll be back all right that's better now the car is on jack stands, the front end at least. So let's see what's the situation underneath. So here, well, we have some leaks, I guess. That's the engine ground or earth. Yeah. We have access to the bottom boat of the starter motor. Not much. Okay, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna support the transmission now, somehow, and we're gonna hook up the engine to the engine crane, and then we're gonna start undoing all the bolts. Fun! Oh, so this is a unibody car? I didn't know that. I thought it was a body on frame. Starting to learn about MGs as well. <laughs> All right, so the bolts that were holding this plate here with the ground strap are removed. The bottom bolt of the starter motor is removed over there. Don't ask how and how many times I swore. Here, there's another one that I removed and I believe that's everything from underneath. The transmission is supported, so I hope that the rest of it is gonna be from above. I don't know if it is because it's my first time working on an MG or it is just so complicated, but every single boat is fighting me. 
So as you can see, I dropped her down as low as possible, but I left just enough room so I can put the jack underneath to support the transmission. Remove the starter. Even this bolt here, for example, is so hard to remove, like you don't have room to swing your wrench. But anyways, I have two more bolts. The other one on the other side is almost removed, I think. Two and a half bolts, okay. Um, I grabbed it here by the cover bolts. Apparently, that's these are lifting points. That's what I've been told. So anyways, I don't see any other way to grab it. I have the leveler here, whatever that unit is called. And uh, the transmission is supported. Um, and um, I removed the bolts from this body mount here directly from the body or from the frame, wherever. And on the other side, I removed the bolts because they are pointing to each other, right? So if I undo this and this, it's gonna wedge itself, so it's not gonna work. This way, I'm gonna lift it together with the body mount on this side, and this body, and on this side, the body mount is gonna stay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna see if I can lift it a little bit, and if it is gonna lift enough together with the transmission, so I can clear this here, because I'm afraid that the pulley is not gonna clear. That's gonna be a problem if it doesn't. Anyways, I think we have more than enough room here to lift together the transmission and the bonnet and the engine. But for that, I think I'm gonna have to remove the shifter as well from here because, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen there. Uh, I think my friend told me that I have to remove the shifter, I think. Anyways, or maybe I'm gonna lift it a little bit and I'll see what's gonna happen to the shifter. Maybe we don't need to remove it. So I just want to lift it and see if it is going to clear and if it clears I'm going to support the transmission in this position and then we're going to loosen a little bit and then I'm going to remove the bolts between the transmission and the uh, engine. Still hooked up to the body mount bolts here. And there you go. Oh, it needs just a little bit more. Okay. I think that's perfect. Let me support the transmission. Okay. So it looks like the transmission is supported. Now maybe in this position, I can remove this body mount. Yeah. Okay. The last three bolts are out, two and a half. <laughs> and I think now there's nothing else that holds the engine to the transmission. I just hope. <laughs> so now I somehow need to pull it this way, even though this is uphill now. So how is that gonna work? No idea. <laughs> She's out, and I don't know, this looks like overheated here, all these fingers, is that normal? Anyways, we'll see, what do we see there? Oh, what? What the heck, is that normal? So you see here, I don't have much experience, but I don't think that's normal. You can't have something just shaking like that. Okay, time to start educating myself. All right, I sent a video to my friend who I told you about, who is restoring an MG midget and uh, i'll see what he has to say so we're gonna need a new plate for sure we'll see what the disc looks like but 
looks like it is in a good shape. It's a Borgen Beck. It's a good brand. All right, so this is what the clutch needs to look like. And maybe, okay, so this is a premium aftermarket, so doesn't say a name, but there are not many different clutches available for uh 1275 engine this is 1275 so only these two and this is not available so that's our only option here but you see what it looks like it has this thing so it's possible that what we see there is actually uh original clutch that fell apart anyways obviously that's the problem so we're gonna order this one and we're gonna go from there Hopefully we're gonna get it soon because I don't want to get this car stuck here forever. Anyways, have you bought the Rusty Beauty's hat yet? It's available in my online store. <laughs> oh, okay. You see that inside? <laughs> These are the missing pieces from that. Uh... Okay, actually, let me take it out and I'll show you. Nothing is cooperating in this engine, in this car. This is crazy. So, look, I can't even put the socket there. Look at that. Like, what kind of a socket do I need for here? Okay, I'm pretty sure there must be a bushing here, right? Which is not there. That's the bushing. So, I think that's what caused the problem. Okay, let me tell you what I think. Okay, so this is my theory. This was one part, like that. It was one part or it was pressed in. Come on. So this was like that. And this was pressed in. Like that. To hold this here. So now this is pressed with the release bearing. But this bushing here was missing inside the flywheel and the input shaft of the transmission was vibrating a lot and it was catching here and from vibration and from overheating and from scratching and everything this thing got detached that's my theory it might be wrong but there must be a bushing there right and there isn't i'm gonna take out the release bearing and check that as well yeah it's cracked the bearing is all cracked so we need a new bearing so we might order a whole entire clutch kit anyways okay let me go do that all right so the parts are ordered and uh, looks like it's gonna take a week or so to get them so i dropped her back on the floor and uh, she's gonna have to wait so in the meantime we're gonna do some work on this baby here so stay tuned for two or three videos on this car so anyways it's really hot and it is crazy but we have to work and i don't have ac in the garage obviously <laughs> so i have to bring a fan maybe but then i have to turn it off every time i want to film so i don't know we will see about that anyways uh, that's gonna be for the first episode of this uh, baby so uh, 
thanks for watching guys thanks for commenting and subscribing and i'll see you in the next one bye